it happened at home, not really inside the house, but outside, and I was attacked. Was it someone you knew? Yes, there was, some, there was someone I knew. What did he do? Um, he attacked me from behind, threw me on the ground. Um, I was beaten as well. Um, I also was physically at abuse and I was raped. She is a rape survivor. She was raped at 14 at her own doorstep by someone she knew. She is not just his victim, but a victim of countless adults who brought up her rapist. What makes a man a rapist? Psychiatrists say that inside the mind of every rapist and potential rapist is a humiliated, abused and neglected child. Shame is, is um, widely used you know, in, when children are being brought up as a, as a means of controlling them, um, to, to be made shame, to be humiliated in, in public, uh, in, in front of a class. We still see uh, teachers uh, humiliating children. The rapist inflicts his own pain on her. Guilt, shame, unclean, a number of feelings that all monks up within a few seconds. It's similar to what he was made to feel as a child by adults. Hate, fright. And so the rapist wants to get back at somebody else, in this case his victim. Another young man who said his mother was always difficult and she always took advantage of him and he always was the one that was beaten because he always did the wrong thing and so women are no good. The cliché, spare the rod and spoil the child, may be responsible for bringing up many a rapist. Simple as the answer may appear, a more humane approach to both teaching and parenting may prevent us as adults from breeding a whole new generation of rapists. I asked this courageous victim to react to a TV6 survey where nearly all women interviewees said the victim asked for it. He's angry. I rebel against that. She should dress a little decent, but that does need to see that she asked to be raped. And men blame the victim because they believe the myth that it's a sexual act, when in fact it is an act of violence. I think we, we still have to move in the society to the, the um, point where responsibility for um, men's behavior in these situations is, is placed squarely on the shoulders of the men. More rapes have been reported since the change in the 1986 Sexual Offenses Act, which is more sensitive towards the victim. But this victim has given up on the law. The man who raped her was caught within weeks, but she waited a year and a half for a hearing, during which time it was constantly adjourned. She was 16 at the time, and had to overcome embarrassment and fear at her trial. She faced her rapist squarely and with mounting anger. I could have shot him. And I felt, so before that, I, I felt a couple of times that um, I wish there was something that I, I could have done to him to, to release my, my anger, my pain, or something that I, some way along that I can destroy him. The course of justice seemed so arduous, she gave up on the case. He's out. Um, I have seen him a, a couple of times. Um, but there's still fear. There's still fear, not only with him, in generally um, in dealing with, with men. Um, not only men, but just, just generally there's, there's fear that it could happen again. This victim speaks to others like herself and work towards surviving because if you don't it can totally break you down and you have to survive it. And here's her message to rapists and would-be rapists out there. I would say to them that being a rapist you are destroying someone's life. You have some people who can survive it and you have some who can't. So you are destroying somebody, you think twice. Here I'm